is there a relationship between hair dyes and pigmentation on the face? It is something that is seen frequently in India, but there's only limited information available in the scientific literature. Hello, my name is Dr. Yasudian and I'm a consultant dermatologist based in the UK. Today I will look at what causes facial pigmentation when we use hair dyes and what we can do to manage it. Indian dermatologists observe hair dye induced pigmentation on a day-to-day -day basis. The diagnosis is based on the timeline between using the hair dyes and the onset of the facial pigmentation and exclusion of other causes. It is called pigmented contact dermatitis and is a non eczematous variant of contact dermatitis and it is characterized by pigmentation with little or no signs of eczema. Similar pigmentation can also be observed with fragrances. In an Indian study, Patel and his colleagues reported pigmentation in about 10% of 263 hair dye users, so it's a fairly common condition. Another Korean study by Wu et al. reported diffuse pigmentation over the face and neck in 11 patients following the use of henna hair dyes. Patients present with slate grey or brown pigmentation and there may be subtle signs of preceding eczema in the form of redness, edema and itching in a few patients. The lateral forehead, the top of the ears, the central forehead and the upper cheek area were the most frequently affected sites. Other sites like the scalp, neck, trunk and upper extremities may also be involved. Here is a patient with prominent forehead pigmentation after using hair dyes. The pigmentation can sometimes be reticulate or net-like. Dermoscopy may be helpful. A pseudo network with grey dots was the most common characteristic dermoscopic feature of pigmented contact dermatitis following the use of henna. Some patients may also develop loss of pigmentation over the scalp or the lips. This is because permanent hair dyes contain potent contact allergens and toxic phenols that are similar to chemical inducers of vitiligo. So therefore, they produce a vitiligo-like picture. Most of the reported cases of pigmentation occurred in patients with dark complexion, pointing towards a genetic predisposition. It's acquired due to direct contact with allergens like hair dyes and perfumes. Experimental studies have shown that skin inflammation increases the number and size of the melanocytes or the pigment-producing cells and enhances their activity. In one study on pigmented contact dermatitis, it was suggested that the concentration of allergens in commercial preparations were too low to produce eczematous changes. Instead, they produce subclinical inflammation, and this results in pigmentary alterations. Paraphenylene diamine, or PPD, is a common culprit and is present in higher concentrations in Indian dyes compared to European dyes. Poor regulations result in unlabeled or incompletely labeled hair dyes. In addition, some brands may contain paraphenylene diamine and have labels such as black henna and ayuprash, and that can potentially mislead or confuse consumers about the safety of the product. Here are a couple of hair dyes that were marketed as natural, but studies have shown that they contained PPD. Patch testing is of immense value in the diagnosis of pigmented contact dermatitis. It will help us to identify if PPD, fragrances or other allergens are playing a part in the facial pigmentation. However, it is not always positive as the allergen may be present in very small or minute concentrations and therefore result in a negative patch test. Treatment for pigmented contact dermatitis or facial pigmentation from hair dyes is challenging. In order to prevent further progression, avoiding the suspected allergen is the most important step. I've done a video on PPD-free hair dyes, and this may give useful information on what hair dyes can be used in those who are allergic or intolerant to PPD. Using tinted sunscreens will prevent sun-induced worsening of the pigmentary changes. Topical steroids applied on the skin in the weekends, alternating with non-steroidal creams or ointments like tacrolimus or pimicolimus during the week may lighten the pigmentation. Treatment with intense pulse light or low energy Q-switched ND YAG laser has also been successful in some studies. Some have used chemical peels once the allergen is excluded and the inflammation settles, but beware that this can sometimes aggravate the pigmentary changes. 
Administration of oral tranexamic acid may also produce significant improvement of post-inflammatory pigmentation. The problem is that most patients continue to use hair dyes despite the development of pigmentation. Lack of awareness that the hair dyes are causing the pigmentation or the social pressures to conceal gray hair may be the possible reasons. However, this may make successful treatment less likely. In conclusion, pigmented contact dermatitis hair dyes is an emerging skin condition, particularly in India, because of unsupervised marketing of cosmetic products, where detailed labeling of the components is not legally mandatory. We need to be aware of this association as continued use of hair dyes in those who are susceptible may make their condition incredibly difficult to treat. I hope you found this information helpful. Thank you for listening and bye.